Hello and welcome to the latest action from the Gas Shocks Compact Cup. We're winging it this weekend because we're on the 1.85 mile Silverstone International Circuit. It's a crucial stage of the season, rounds 9 and 10 this weekend, with just four more races to go after this. But we start in Cheshire because the 7th and 8th rounds of the championship were held for the first time at Alton Park back at the beginning of July. Down two cascades for the first time, then it's side by side for the lead of the race. Tovey on the inside, Roberts is on the outside. Oh, and there's a bit of contact there, and that's Tovey spinning around. Roberts is off as well. John Watt goes through into the lead of the race, but he loses out now to Paul Hinson. Well, let's have a look at the replay. The two leaders side by side. Roberts in the white car, the championship leader on the outside. We've got John Watt on the inside of him as well, but there was contact, I think, between Roberts and Tovey. Tovey came off worse and spun around, but Roberts got bouncing over the grass as he tried to rejoin the circuit. So safety car then here at Alton Park. Not often that we get a safety car in the Compact Cup, but a different race organiser here this weekend. And it's Paul Hinson that is leading the field round from in second place, the number 99 car of Ben Pearson. Looks like James Gornall is in third place and John Watt fourth as the race gets underway again. Through Old Tall Corner for the first time. The top three have made a bit of a break from the rest here. Possibly John Watt caught napping a bit there. Declan McDonnell goes through in fifth. And there's uh, Jonathan Davis going through as well. Mark Morton in the green number 26 car is quite well up the order too. As they make their way down towards Cascades. Hinson continuing to lead then. The challenge on for second place. James Gornall in the background with his headlamps ablaze. Trying to put some pressure on the ex Janetta Junior racer Ben Pearson. It's the highest we've seen him up the order so far. Through the chicane and up Clay Hill they go for the first time after their release from behind the safety car. Hinson getting away here then. He's leading by about a second and a half. It's almost side by side though for second. Pearson holding on from the ex-British GT champion James Gornall. Winning that title back in 2008. Still John Watt there in fourth, McDonnell fifth. And Gornall now through to second place. Ahead of Pearson, there's Declan McDonnell in the Makatak racing car, the brightly coloured livery. He's making his way down towards the left-hand sweeper at Island Bend. Well, Gornall chasing after Hinson here, but the gap is still around about a second and a half between the pair. Oh, and a challenge on further back. That's a, a threat on the number 99 car of Ben Pearson from John Watt. Two of them pretty much together there now. Great racing here in the Compact Cup, the first time these cars have been to the Alton Park International Circuit. And there's a new leader because James Gornall is now out in front. What has happened to Paul Hinson? There he is in the background. Paul Hinson, our race leader, the former MR2 champion, goes into retirement. And that promotes James Gornall into the lead. It's Ben Pearson second, John Watt in third place now as they climb Clay Hill for what I think is going to be the final time. Declan McDonald up to fourth. There's Hinson, something broken on his car. He retires from the race, denying him his first win. Instead, James Gornall wins for the first time in the Compact Cup. James Gornall, how do you feel after your race win today? I'm very pleased. I've been second too many times, so to finally get a win is very good. Although I was gifted a little bit after Paul Hinson had a problem on the, uh, I think it was the penultimate lap. He had a, a, I think it was a two second gap and it was going to be pretty tough to catch that because we were quite similar in pace. Excellent, excellent. And did the, did the safety car incident affect your sort of strategy much? Not really. I was planning to drive flat out from start to finish, so we just had to do a slow bit in the middle. <laughs> but uh, I got a reasonable restart so I, uh, and gapped the guys behind as well. I think they were sleeping uh, rather than paying attention. I was lucky not to get caught up in that first corner incident because they were spinning right in front of me. But ultimately, it worked out all right. And it was two of my uh, people I'm trying to beat who were involved in that incident. So I'll, I'll take what I can get. All set for the second race of the day here at Alton Park. We're going to have the first lap drama that we did in race one. 
They're off and running, and Steve Roberts makes a good start. He's on the outside line. It looks like he's going to sweep into the lead, into Old Hall Corner for the first time. You can see Paul Hinson is out there as well. It was a broken front wishbone for him in race one. He's borrowed one from another team to get out in race two. Through Cascades, Gornal there. The race one winner is in third position because the two leaders just a little bit further up the road. And it's the two drivers that came to grief at Cascades on the opening lap of race one, Steve Roberts and Mike Tovey. Tovey shows his nose to Roberts now as they come down towards his lops, the chicane. Gornal there in third, having to work hard to hand off, fend off John Watt. And a huge gaggle of uh, compacts coming down towards us here. 37 cars taking part here at Alton Park this weekend, a near capacity grid of these 318 TIs. Well, Roberts extending his lead here over Tovey. It's these two drivers that are up in contention at the sharp end of the championship, along with James Gornall. There's John Watt. He's going more well uh, of late. And he, too, has pulled away now from the fifth-place car, which is that of Paul Hinson. Paul, who was cruelly denied that win in race one, going reasonably strongly in race two. Down towards the chicane once again. Roberts, Tovey, Gornall and Watt. Gap back then to Hinson in fifth place. It's Owen Hunter in sixth position. But a long line of BMWs making their way down from Hilltop towards this chicane. And up Clay Hill they will go. Back into the woods towards Druids. Ooh, bit of an instant there. Dust kicked up. Oh, and yes, one of the... Uh, Tire stacks, one of the corner markers has been uh, knocked out of position. It may well have been the number 10 car there. Clobbered it, that's Dave Whitmore. Um, snookered it onto the grass. Oh, it's side by side for the lead of the race now. Tovey on the inside line, and he goes through to take the lead away from Steve Roberts. Well, that's good going because the gap had been more than a second at one point. Roberts fighting back though on the exit of Old Hall. And he's back through by the time they get to Cascades. Meanwhile, Gornall now under a lot of pressure as well from John Watt for the final position on the podium. And uh, Gornall there, did he make a bit of a mistake? Watt right underneath him. Roberts from Tovey who has another look now and has a big lock up going down into his is. So Roberts holds on for the moment. Out of the chicane they go, up Clay Hill once more. Roberts, I think, much about be able to hold on here. Checkered flag is made ready, and it is going to be Steve Roberts that takes it from Mike Tovey in second place. And it's John Watt that comes across the line, taking his first podium in the Compact Cup. So a great race win for you there, Steve. It was a fairly close battle between you and Mike Toby, wasn't it? All the way around. Talk us through the race. Yeah, I mean, me and Mike, um, we both had the pace in qualifying and John Watt did, to be fair, as well. Um, obviously, me and Mike, we didn't have a coming together in the first one, but it was very close. We pushed each other very hard and we both, unfortunately, skidded off at um, Cascades, I think it was. And uh, so that kind of wrecked both of our races. So we kind of had a word with each other and said, well, let's get through the first two corners this time. Luckily, I, I got a good start. Um, and managed to just get ahead of him and um, and then we settled into the race and we had the pace over the rest of the field so we managed to gap, gap the rest of the field but then we got into a pretty intense fight um, Mike managed to actually get past me but I managed to do him back pretty quickly uh, but then uh, and then uh, to be honest I, I managed to get four or five car lengths on him coming over the line I was thinking right this is going to be the last lap ball and the checker just came out so I think they hit curfew and luckily for me you know I was happy to see the checker because you as well when you're in, in the front but it was unlucky for Mike, you know, because he, he wanted another lap to try and get past me, and I think it would have been a, a good climax. We head back to Silverstone after this break. Welcome back to Silverstone for round nine of the Gas Shocks Compact Cup, the first race of the weekend. And as you can see, it's now pretty wet here at Silverstone. The heavens opened not so very long ago, so it's made conditions very difficult indeed for these Compact Cup drivers. Steve Roberts leading the championship now by 23 points from James Gornall. 
coming into this weekend. Mike Tovey, a further 11 points behind in third. Owen Hunter is fourth. On pole position for this one, though, it's John Watt. He had pole at Alton. He's got pole at Silton as well. John Davis next to him on the front row of the grid. It's Simon Roach and Steve Roberts on row two as the lights go out. Not a particularly good start from Roberts there. It's a good start from Owen Hunter from the third row of the grid in the number 47 car. And he has the inside line as they head down towards Abbey for the first time. We're on board with John Watt and he made, well, a pretty disastrous start from pole. As you can see, already several cars have made their way through ahead of him including on the left-hand side of the pitch there, James Gornall, the white car with the orange stripe. But just look how difficult conditions uh, are at the moment. Headlamps ablaze, it's very gloomy, the rain coming down hard. We're on board here with number 26, Mark Morton, who started on row seven of the grid. And he has a bit of a moment, he's got it gathered up once again. But, uh, well, very difficult conditions here. Not a lot of visibility. It's Davis then from the uh, outside of the front row, well actually the inside of the front row because uh, pole position is on the left here at uh, Silverstone for the first corner of the right-hander at Abbey. But it's Davis that leads for the moment. It looks like he's heading a flotilla down the Thames, doesn't it? Because there's so much spray. Davis it is that leads though. It looks like it is Hunter that is up to second place. So he's made a very good start. Roberts, I could see, the championship leader, back in about seventh place. Had sort of that disruption to his winning streak in the first of those races as Ultra Park. That first corner incident on board with John Watt. Um, our pole position man, you can see that misting up might be a bit of a problem for some of the drivers as off goes Simon Roach. Number 65 started on the second row of the grid and he has a bit of a trek through the gravel trap uh, and rejoins, but uh, well down the order, I would think by the time he gets back onto the circuit. Absolutely crucial here to keep off the white lines. As uh, so Mark Morton loses a position to the number 59 car of Jim Benson, who started three rows further behind Morton on the grid. So down the straight they go, towards Abbey for the second time. There are cars in front of Benson, I'm fairly sure, it's just that we can't see any of them. Now some drivers, I think, have decided to call it a day and head into the pit lane. Now one of them has damage, and that is Paul Hinson. He didn't have too much luck at Alton Park, he finished fifth in race two. But uh, no luck here, it seems, at Silverstone, retiring at the end of lap one with damage. Well, the rain continues to fall here. There is Owen Hunter then, number 47, now out in front from Gornall and Roberts, who not so very long ago was, I think, back in about seventh place. Davis is down to fourth, having been leading uh, towards the end of the first lap. So a bit of a shake-up here, which is not necessarily surprising in these difficult conditions. Paul Rhodes going through the uh, X Mighty Mini race, the 29 car, the white one with the blue roof. But it's Hunter then that leads. The two white cars are in second and third, taking very different lines into Stowe Corner, trying to find some grip, but I can't imagine there's very much anywhere in these conditions because it's absolutely chucking it down at the moment. Back on board with Benson then. As I say, he started on row 10 of the grid. There was 21 rows of the grid, 42 cars taking the start of this race. And yeah, you can see virtually nothing out of the front of the car. Hopefully Jim can see a bit more than we can. Under braking now for the left-hander at Vale. It looked like Declan McDonald might have been a couple of cars in front of us. Uh, yes, he was, and also there uh, is Rhodes in that 29 car, and it's also the 28 as well that we can see, which is Daniel Kirby, the sort of white and pink liveried car. So making their way onto another lap here, and there are our two leaders, Hunter and Gornall, heading down to the hairpin at Village. And they all negotiate their way safely around this tight right-hander. Then it's the left-hand kink. And then it's the right-hander, 90-degree right-hander that takes them through the link and on to the uh, Grand Prix circuit again, down the hangar straight. Getting the power to down again, but maybe a little bit gingerly. Here's Gornall then, number 18. Second in the championship now. He overhauled Mike Tovey in the previous meeting at Orton Park with a first and a fourth place finish. It's on the outside line going down to Stowe, Hunter on the inside line 
Are we going to have a change of lead? Bit of a correction needed there by Gornal. As we look further back down the order into the pack, you can see the seven car, which is uh, Aaron Morgan going through, the Basingstoke driver, who, of course, as we heard early on in the season, has to use hand controls on that car. So Gornal did make it through, and Robert's trying to follow as well around the outside at Vale. He's done it on Hunter in the space of a couple of corners. Goes from first back to third place. Looks like it's Tovey now up into fourth position. He started fifth on the grid. As the drivers go through to complete another lap. Jonathan Davis, I think, in fifth place now. It's difficult to make the cars out in uh, these very gloomy conditions. Here. So there's Declan McDonnell, Mark Morton going through as well. And the 10 car of David Whitmore. Those two drivers enjoying a, a good battle. It's outside the top 10. In fact, I think it's about 15th and 16th positions. Through Abbey and a big spin. That's for Jonathan Davies, isn't it? The man that started on the front row led towards the end of the first lap of the race as well. Now he was running in fifth place and that's going to put him mm, around about tenth now, I think. So a costly spin for him as going straight on there is John Watt. Sorry, not John Watt. It's the 24 car, isn't it? Which is Richard Miles. Now he was going quite well, actually. I'm not sure. He's actually lost that oh, much ground, but uh, he's only got off the ground there getting some air over that bump Hopefully no damage done now that 15 car is a back mark it's James Barrett that is being lapped by the two leaders James Gornall and Steve Roberts who are now pretty much nose to tail here look how the cars squirm a little bit as they go around Stowe Corner struggling to find grip but Roberts is going to draw alongside Gornall here now heading down towards the left hander at Vale Gornall's going to have the inside line but then the next corner after that is a right hander at Club is Roberts close enough to slip through no he's not he's about half a car length behind can he get the power down more effectively than Gornall as they come through the right hander and up to the line not on this occasion over the line they go, but they're separated by, well, not very much at all. Roberts now having looked down the inside, we've got on board with James Gornall on racing. And now are we going to see a white car just sort of nosing ahead to our right through Abbey? <laughs> Look how crossed up Gornall gets, but tremendous reflexes. Able to correct it and keep it all pointing in the right direction. Skillful driving that from Gornall, especially under such pressure from Roberts, the championship leader as well. Both of these drivers having enjoyed success in single-seater racing in the past, in Formula Ford in the case of Roberts, and Formula Renault in the case of Gornall. He always took uh, different directions after that. Good to have Gornall back racing in this club formula. Yep, back to third now, and Tovey. And Hunter is fourth. Hunter, who early on in the season was a race winner at Donington Park. More back marker Lapri to be dealt with. There's the 66 car going through, which is that of uh, Ian McDonald. And of course, in these conditions, probably some drivers are a little, little bit more wary than they otherwise would be. Perhaps not as experienced in very wet conditions like this as well. So we'll probably see a bit more traffic to be dealt with during the course of this race than if it had been dry. That's that 66 car, that back marker that we we're talking about, possibly delaying. 35 Mike Tovey a little bit. He is going to make it through though at Club Corner. So he does go through to deal with that back marker now. Tovey clear in third place. Hunter will follow through as well in fourth spot. So on to the final lap of this compact cup race and I'm sure for the drivers it probably can't come soon enough. It's still pretty horrible out there. There's a change of lead and Roberts goes through at Abbey to take the lead away from James Gornall, the start of the final lap of the race. And Gornall has lost out here, but I'm sure he'll try to fight back. Down to the hairpin at Village, the right hand up. Gornall on the outside line. He's going to cut back on the exit. Now he sort of follows more or less the line of It's a left hand kink than the right hander. At the link, there they are then, appearing back into our shot and heading on to the hangar straight for the final time. Gornall will be in the toe, he'll also be right in the spray of Steve Roberts here. So what does he do? Does he jink out to avoid the spray? 
difficult to do when you're so close. He is taking a slight different line to the right-hand side of the circuit. Roberts driving up the middle of the road. Gornal now goes left. Another back marker uh, to be dealt with as well. I think he just about keeps out of the way. But uh, the two leaders go through Stowe Corner. And only really a couple of corners left now for James Gornal to try and find a way back ahead of Steve Roberts, who took the lead at the start of the final lap into Vale. Only about a car and a half length between them. And it is still... Roberts that leads but now that cap down to about a quarter of a car length the two cars almost side by side as they come through the first part of club now to the second apex of club but Roberts is going to hold on for another win it's his eighth of the season in the Gas Shocks Compact Cup James Gornal it is that takes second place and third position goes the way of Mike Toby a good drive that in uh, difficult conditions Owen into fourth and John Watt in fifth position having started from pole rest of the field making their way through at the end of nine laps good battles all the way down the order but a good drive there from Steve Roberts to get the victory taking the lead at the beginning of the final lap of the race here on the Silverstone International Circuit time for a check on the results then and it was a win for Roberts by less than half a second over James Gornall Tovey, Hunter, Watt and Richard Miles after his off completing the top six. Mike Tovey in third place by the way he got the fastest lap as well a 1 minute 40.41 outside the top six it was Ian Jones in seventh, Ben Pearson eighth, James Nutt Brown ninth and John Davis and the starting from over had that spin at Abbey completing the top ten Steve Roberts another winner for this year in the BMW Compact Cup that one though looked a lot trickier than normal I was uh that was a tough race. I mean, I had James. James came from so far back off the grid. I mean, he didn't have the best of qualifiers, but fair play, he got a great start. And then um, it was kind of, we all tussling to start with and I couldn't, didn't even know what position I was. So going down the back straight to start with, it was like the whole Walter, Hull, Walter Hayes days. It was like, I could not see a thing. So it's just a case of wait for someone to appear in front of you and then get on the brakes. And especially when you're the first one, of course, in that train as well, you gotta be careful. Well, yeah, I mean, I was back in sixth, I think, sixth or seventh on the first lap, but we picked our way through. I see James picked his way through as well. And then it was me, James and Mike start to stretch our legs. I think Hunter was involved as well. And then me and James managed to break away. And then it was just a case of, I had the advantage of having seen where he was breaking, but then he, uh, I, I couldn't see where I was going. Mm. So uh, I, I was just trying to catch him. I was a little bit strong in this last section. And um, just before the start of the last lap, he made a little mistake and I managed to get up the inside. There was a bit of rubbing and I don't felt like I, I did anything malicious. Um, I could understand why he'd be frustrated because he drove a great race. You know, he, he led the pack all the way through and to lose on the last lap is going to be frustrating. So I'd be, I'd be fed up as well. But, you know, I felt I raced fairly and it, I thought it was a really good race. James Gornall coming home in second place. It could have been a lot better, of course. You were leading at one point, but still on the podium. Yeah, it was pretty good considering where I qualified ninth, which was uh, dismal. I was praying for the rain a little bit because it's normally an equaliser, but I tend to go well, so I like it. As long as I don't get too wet, which we're doing now, stood out in the rain. But I think overall it was a good race. Uh, very close to Steve at the end there. So now we've got to start from, I think, 11th in the second race, so that's going to be interesting as well. You really came through the field in that first race there. What was the, the setup on the car like? As you do in the wet, you go a bit softer, but uh, the car felt reasonable. I think our tyres are a little older than everyone else. I'm still on the second set, but I, I actually used the first set we used uh, in, that, in that race. But it, it was reasonable, and I think we're just going to have to keep pushing hard now. I don't know, I don't know if those tyres got enough tread for the second race, but we'll find out, won't we? Mike so. Tovey coming home in third place there. That was a really good race to watch. Could you see much uh, from your point of view? No, nothing at all. I mean, the visibility was horrendous. One of the worst races I've ever driven in. Um, so to pick up a P3, I was, I'm over the moon. And of course, the main thing in a race like this is just keep the car on the track. Well, it's to finish, and uh, unfortunately, the two championship rivals managed to get past me and finish in front, which isn't the best of the championship, but a solid P3 is consistency again for the championship, so I'm, I'm happy. You'll look forward now to race two. What can you kind of come up with there? Um, hopefully it dries out a little bit. There's less standing water, but um, we'll see how we get on. I mean, I'm, I'm happy with the wet conditions. I mean, I've got a brilliant car set up by Robin at Royal Motorsport and uh, some big sponsors behind me as well, findmycar.co.uk. So uh, we'll see what you can do for them in race two. Good luck, Mike. Thanks very much.
conditions could not be more different for this, the second and final race of the day in the Gaz Shock Compact Cup. Streaming wet for race one, dry and sunny for race number two. And it's Davis that's on pole position this time from Watt, Roberts and Roach on row two, Toby and Hunter on row three. As the lights are on, quite a long hold this. They go out now. We go on board with Simon Welch starting a bit further back down the grid on row number 19. And uh, well, the car's getting away a little bit quicker than he does, but up to speed now. He's being passed by the number 42 car of Mark Cornell, but the cars look as if they're going to make it safely through Abbey for the first time. This fast sweeping right hander, then it's the left hand sweeper at farm that takes them down to village and it's side by side for the lead. It's Davis that's just about going to hold on though. Roberts is uh, just edged out a little bit wide there. He made a good start though from the second row of the grid. He might lose another position here to Mike Tovey. The two Raw Motorsport cars absolutely side by side. Black car for Tovey, white car for Roberts number 56. Nice that with that uh, familiar number. He's raced with the uh, all through his career. On board again with uh, Simon Welch. Just uh, up ahead of us there is, I think that's the number 96 car, isn't it? Which is that of Chris Hack. It's towards the front of the pack. Paul Hinson back out in this race. He was classified 40th in race one. Mark Morton We're on board with him, just behind Daniel Kirby. Morton in car 26. You can certainly see more out of his car this time with the, the sun glinting off the cars in front and he might make up a place or two here. Going wide there is John Watt, again the pole position man from race one, front row starter for race two. Being out to try a little bit there. He's going to end the first lap in something like 10th or 11th position I think. James Wynn Stanley is number 17. Now he started right in the middle of the pack on row 12. That's the place that you want to start a compact cup or any other busy race for that matter. You can find yourself in a bit of trouble, but I think Wynn Stanley, from to PPC, has made it safely through. Oh, and some of the cars have not. Three cars having come to grief there. I'm trying to see who they all are. A bit of damage on them as well. But uh, they didn't hit anything apart from each other. Off on the tarmac runner off area on the exit of farm. Anyway, it's Roberts that now leads. And we're having a change for second here as well. Is Davis losing out? Might well be. It's Toby there that's in fourth position, just ahead of Gornall. And it is Joe Wiggin. Joe Wiggin, number 41, that's up into second place. Now, Joe showed excellent pace in testing on Friday possibly a little bit disappointed with his qualifying performance. He's on row four of the uh, grid uh, for this one. But uh, what a great start he's made because he's now up into second position. Still in only his fifth race meeting. Uh, Paul Rhodes, I think, was one of those cars involved up at farm and he has pulled off in number 29. Bit of a moment there for number 48, James Ford there through club corner. Look at this line of cars. Fantastic sight these compact cup cars make. 1.9 litres, of course, as they make their way down the straight. There's James Wynn Stanley. We were on board with him a moment ago. Spinner up ahead. That's uh, James Barrett, isn't it? Who, as we said, is towards the rear of the field. So, a train of cars for this leading group. It's Roberts leading. Wiggin sharing his nose. Wiggin, who's been around the 750 Motor Club paddock for as long as I can remember actually but uh, in his first season of racing now so it's leading the way Steve Roberts Wiggin in second third place is Davis of the three of them only Roberts has won a race before in the compact cup and he's won plenty of them over the past three seasons he was the champion in 2013 losing out narrowly to Stuart Voice last season to get his uh, title back this year on board with Mark Morton in that number 26 car. Making his way onto the international pit straight here. And down towards the right hand of Abbey. He's still behind Daniel Kirby here. This is uh, towards the back end of the top 10, this particular scrap. As now, uh, well, 
Wigan has lost out, hasn't he? Because he's now gone down to third. He's gone down to fourth position, in fact, because Mike Tovey, through the left-hand draft of Village, has gone through. And Tovey goes to third. And, ooh, big moment there for James Gornall. The car was sideways as he came back onto the hangar straight. Might well, have to be careful there with the, how much of the tarmac they're using on the exit of the corner. But a big lead now for Roberts over Davis in second place. Tovey is third, Wiggin is fourth, Owen Hunter fifth, Declan McDonald sixth, Gornall is seventh. And there's a gap back to these three cars, which are pretty much side by side, heading into Stowe Corner. It looks like it's Ben Pearson trying to go around the outside of all of them there. Is he going to make that stick? It's Davis then, number 27, the driver from Peterborough. Here's that next group, it's Roach, isn't it? It's been uh, tapped into a bit of a sideways moment there, maybe. Or Henson, the driver behind him. It's a frenetic action, certainly in this 10th round of the Compact Cup. Just four more races to go after this. It's Leicester and Donington Park to round out the season. Back on board with Gwyn Stanley, then. He's outside the top 20. To, to make a squeeze in such a large field, a competitive field of these cars as we have in the Compact Cup this year. Side by side action is Derry Gert, and at the moment, outside us, it's one of the more motorsport cars. It's the 57 of Mark Skeets, a number of the cars prepared by Robin Welsh's concern. And at Wind and Sunny, they're being attacked on both sides, and it looked uh, like it might be James Ford, was it, that was making his way through? as well in number 48. So with a couple of cars ahead of him now as he makes his way along the straight. And it's either of those places back. Oh no, quite the opposite. He's going to lose another one there to number 25 Darren Ball I'm afraid. It's got a happy couple of corners for James Wynn Stanley. Towards Village, the right hander. He's trying to see that 25 car off. He's trying but unfortunately failing to go to that left hand king. It's the 90 degree right hander. And takes the back up to the hand straight. Look how the, the drives there do um, quite wide. Well, it's Davis back in the lead of the race now. Because he had that spin in, at Abbey Corner in race one. Dropped him from about fifth position down to an eventual tenth place. marker to be negotiated as well so Davis it is that leads for the moment at least here's this scrap again Whitmore it is in the number 10 car the uh, driver from Staley Bridge as we're looking there at number 5 which is Kevin Denwood his multicoloured car 57 is Mark Skeets 82 is Craig Jameson and all of this action is happening at the bottom end of the top 20 Here's Davis though, in the lead of the race, but only narrowly from Steve Roberts here. It looks like any one of these four cars really could win. There is a gap back now to Hunter in fifth position, who did well really to get the result that he did in race one, fourth place despite his windscreen wiper coming adrift, which is not what he needed in those conditions. Roberts now having a look up the inside at Stoke Corner to get the lead back from Jonathan Davis. Roberts with a heck of a lot more experience than Davis, you won't mind me saying. Side by side, the pair of them now, down towards the left-hander at Vale. What gives here? Roberts gives. So it's Davis that holds on. Roberts second, Tovey in third position. Joe Wiggin is there in fourth place, just a car or length or so behind them. And yes, we get the last lap board this time. So. 1.85 miles now between these drivers and the chequered flag and between Jonathan Davis, Jono Davis and his first win in the Compact Cup. Can he hold on? It's not going to be easy with the long hanger straight here at Silverstone which gives such a good tow. You don't necessarily want to be leading going on to the final lap. Roberts is trying to get ahead before he even gets to the hanger straight though. And he leaves the door open there to Tovey, so that wasn't necessarily a smart move. Tovey, will he go second? He'll have the inside line as they rejoin the hangar straight. That's going to mean that Dave Roberts has to go particularly wide. So he can pick up the toe there, but he's also giving a toe to Joe Wiggin as well, and possibly doesn't 
quite have the momentum that he needs. It's given Davis a bit of a break now, this in actual fact. So, who's going to be second here? It's uh, Tovey and P2 at the moment, and I think it's Wiggin up to third, is it? Yes, it is, just about. Roberts down to fourth place, but it's very close indeed. Hunter coming back into this in fifth position as well. But what is going on inside John O'Davis's crash helmet at the moment? Heading towards the final couple of corners ahead of his first win. Meanwhile, for third, Roberts goes back through on the inside. The two leads almost touching there as they go through the first part of club corner. But I think Davis is going to hold on here. Second part of club corner approaching, then it's immediately over the finish line. And it's a win for Jonathan Davis in round 10 of the Gas Shocks Compact Cup. Second place goes to Toby. Roberts gets third. Joe Wiggin just missing out on his first podium. And Owen Hunter it is that takes fifth position. Well, that race worthy of a round of applause from the crowd. Let's have a look at the results. And Davis confirms as the winner, but Tovey, Roberts and Wiggin all within a second. Not Owen Hunter in fifth, but James Gore. Hunter penalised five seconds for contact. That also promotes Declan McDonald in the top six. Owen Hunter down to seventh. Roach, Kirby and Miles complete the top ten. The second race today, Mike Tovey gets the fastest lap in the dry conditions, some 17 seconds quicker than he went in the wet. Jonathan Davis, what a race that was to pick up your first uh, win in the BMW Compact Cup here at Silverstone. Well done. Thank you. It was absolutely fantastic from the lights to the flag. Um, it's one of the most fun races I've, I think I've ever had in the 10 years I've been racing, or 11 years. Um, and I just can't wait to get back out on circuit with them again and do it again. It seems to be non-stop. Lots of action out there. Yeah, yeah, I was just hoping that Mike would get past Steve and give me a little bit of a break, but it just wasn't happening. Um, he got him on the last lap, but I just needed a break. And what were the conditions like? Ones that you uh, obviously thrived in? Yeah, um, yeah, I'd been hoping for a dry weekend, looking at the weather forecast for like a couple of weeks before, and I was just a little bit upset, but when the sun came out for that final race, I was, my heart was pounding and I was ready for it. Second place this time round, Mike. Uh, it seemed like there was a lot of fun out there on track. Yeah, I'd say what, that's what we call club motorsport. Absolutely fantastic, lovely it from start to finish. Um, that was really a really good race. You never knew which way it was going to go. One time you're down in fifth, then you're up back to the front again. Yeah, good start, but then um, like I said I was down in fourth at one point, and then back up into third, then managed to uh, pit Roberts for uh, second on the last lap, which I'm over the moon with. You still keep, keep an eye on that uh, championship this year? Yeah, it's tight. I think uh, I think Mr. Roberts is uh, starting to pull away a bit too much. We need to have some bad rounds for him. Um, but I think it's a fight for second now it's between me, uh, Jiggy and uh, Owen Hunter as well, I think. Next up on the calendar, you looking forward to that one? Yeah, I quite like uh, Snetterton. It's a good track for me, so uh, we'll look forward to going there and hopefully getting a few more podiums, maybe even a win. Steve, a little bit further down the podium this time, but still with uh, solid points. Oh yeah, we had a brilliant day. I mean, our testing on Friday wasn't the best. Um, we thought we were going to be struggling, but um, the wet race saved us in the first one. We had a good, good race there, and then that was a cracking race. I mean... Uh, I seem to have a skill of letting the races go here because uh, in the dry last year I let a, a big lead go and I, I got past Jonathan in the first couple of laps and managed to get a bit of a gap but then I just I, I was doing my pace mid-23s and they just clawed me back in and then it was just a case of a bit of a ding-dong and last couple of laps I was, should have had my championship head on but I didn't I was just trying to send it down the outside of Jonathan into the tight section unfortunately that let Mike pass I mean the lap before he nearly happened and then I don't know why I did it again, but I did. So I tried to tried to win it on the last lap again. And fortunately, Mike nipped by, but we were all driving. You know, I thought it was a really good race and we all drove very close, clean, but hard racing as well. So yeah, I've got to be pleased with that. Here are the point standings with just four races left to go. It's looking good for Steve Roberts. He's now 29 points clear of James Gornall, Mike Tovey in third, Hunter, Watt and Ben Pearson completing the top six as we go into our next meeting at Snetterton. But that's all we've got time for here at Silverstone. Do join us again very soon for more action from the Compact Cup. Bye for now.